So welcome everybody to this Thursday's Nano Spino uh, talk. This will be the last of this academic course. And today uh, we have here uh, Blanca Motos, uh, she's from Zaragoza. She, she studied chemistry in this university, but later on, she also did a master in sustainable chemistry in the Faculty of Science, and then she moved to Montpellier for doing PhD. And after that, several postdocs, you know, also in France. And finally, came back to, to Spain and joined this company, AD Particles. And in AD Particles, is there since 2015, so seven years, where she occupy different positions <laughs> or make many different things like, of course, the technical part, but also quality control, regulation, industrial property, and of course, R&D. Uh, she also participated in H 2020 project for scale up processes. So this is something that always is interesting for us you know, because we develop in the lab materials and then we want to scale up. So it's good to have a company behind. And today she's going to explain us about this company, Advanced Dispersed Particles, where the main, as you see, the main activities is related also to cosmetics. So Blanca, thank you for coming and the floor is yours. Many no, thanks. So it's a pleasure for me being back here in Zaragoza in my university and many thanks to the Capital Sanka of Nanotechnologia and the University of Zaragoza for giving me this opportunity. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our company and about our technology and how this technology is allowing us to solve some needs of the market. That is something very important when creating some companies for uh, university. So, uh, AD Particles, is like the surname of Advanced Dispersed Particles, is a technology based startup that is located in Colmenar Viejo in Madrid. And we are having a technology that we are have remained like, uh, renamed like Co Smart Technology, Sustainability, and Health and that is used mainly in the cosmetic sector and pharma sector. What about our company and our origin? So it was in 2011 when a group of scientists, by using a patent that was um, published two years before. It's just to... So, okay. <laughs> thank you. So in 2011, there was a group of scientists from CSIC in Madrid that were having a patent and they joined a group of investors to start to study how to apply this patent to the market. So they started by the creation of the company. So this group of investors was named the Able Capital at that time while helping this group of uh, scientists to start to look for different ideas. So they were investigating in polymers, in catalysis, also making tests in cements and permanent magnets. And finally, from the ceramic group, they started to think about mineral UV filters based on titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. So first, Products were there in 2014. One year later, we started to introduce this product into the market. Step by step, we started to be like a, a company. So we needed to work in quality stuff. We started with certification of ISO related to quality. We started to work in certification for the products like Ecoser and Cosmos that are related to natural products. And we had to also go on working in new developments. So in 2019, 
we were having our current portfolio of products in the market. Afterwards, after that, we had the need of going to somewhere else, let's say, and we decided to go to FDA to American markets. In that moment, we had to start to adapt our facilities, our company to the requirements. And well, of course, we had to register the facilities, to register the products, and to start to look for different new, if necessary, um, analytical methods. And till now, we have been working to update the quality system and also in the products that we were having already in the market, we were working in some new studies in collaboration with different universities. Yes, as an example, I have included uh, blue light and infrared protection properties that we have been publishing like uh, one or two years ago. Yeah, one year ago. But who we are? The key point of the company is always the people. So we are 12 people in the company working inside, apart from collaboration with different, um, of course, with different universities, with different companies, but it is very important to work as a team. So we have a CEO that is more focused in the analysis part because she's having, she's coming from this market. She's an expert in analytical side. We have an RID team that in our company is in charge of quality control of new developments of formulation. When I'm talking about formulation, I talking, I mean uh, taking our products, put it in some prototypes that are creams, and with these prototypes going to clients to help the commercial area to show how the products are acting and how the products feel. I will share later some. Uh, examples. We have, of course, the production team, but I have to say that the production responsible is also contributing to R&D because he was also coming from a CSIC. So he's part of the, for me, he's part of the R&D team. But production guys here, they are in charge of production, they are in charge of uh, warehouse and also of maintenance of the facilities. We have also a quality unit that is the name of like the quality department for our uh, FDA. In terms of quality assurance, but uh, there's a person in this unit together with, with um, the CEO and also from R&D team, we have also people working in the quality unit. It's something pretty related when talking about chemical products. Also two person uh, from administrative and finances. Commercial people, we have two, one for the um, Spanish area, another for international, and also a colleague in terms of marketing. So, well, of course we are 12, but we there is not like one people, one task. We have to really collaborate. <laughs> And how we go to the market? What about our commercial activities? The sales model for this kind of products is working with, well, or going for direct clients. I'm talking about cosmetic and pharma companies and also about formulators that are working for third parties. I'm talking about distributors because our international sales manager is, uh, yeah, is really working in collaboration with this distributor in different countries. Nowadays, we are present in over 25 countries. So this sales area that I was saying before is like divided in national market and international with the help of distributors. And uh, yeah, in the sales part, technical support is very important when talking about um, technical products and also of course, the help and assistant of administrative department that is crucial. I have included here a kind of tree for explaining that we started in a Spanish market in 2000, yeah, 2015, 2016, the first sales. Then 
we started to sell in Europe, Hungary, Czech Republic first, together with Denmark and Italy. Then we had our first client from Slovenia, Germany, Holland, France, Switzerland, all of, all of this in Europe. Then we went to America. Our first uh, clients were coming from Colombia. And then we entered into US market with this FDA procedure. And here we have also some countries from uh, Asia Pacific regions. Step by step, we are like uh, promoting thanks to our salespeople and distributor and reaching different places all over the world. But why this market? Why it is interesting? So if you see here a graph, we are in 2022. And in seven years time, we are expecting to increase the market value in $10 billion. So it's kind of uh, interesting for the investors. And also we have some drivers in photo protection that are photo protection in the broad spectrum. I will talk about them later. Sustainability and also multifunctional ingredient. But let's talk about this need a little bit more. Here we have the solar spectrum. Although I guess you may know it pretty well. So we have ultraviolet, visible light, and infrared, from more energetic to more penetrative radiation. As you see here, we have the ozone layer. UVC is not reaching our um, body, luckily, thanks to the stratosphere, but there is part of UVB radiation that is reaching our skin, also UVA, visible light, and infrared reaching the air surface. But of course, the radiation of the solar spectrum have very nice properties, very nice benefits, like uh, vitamin D synthesis. You only have to think about a pandemic. We were all of us inside. We could not go outdoor. Uh, our mood was not so good, I and mean, it is related also to the sun. Uh, we really needed to, I mean, we were really missing to go abroad in this time because sun is related to well being and good mood. Sun is having some, um, is improving the immune system response, even the cardiovascular health, and this is also treat for some skin disorders. However, we need also protection. I have here a graph. You see different components of the radiation. This is the skin. So the first layer is reached by UVB. UVB radiation is related to erythema when we are burned, when we are red, and also uh, potentially with DNA damage and skin cancer. UVA that is reaching our dermis is related with photoaging, with our wrinkles. Also with sun allergies and DNA damage again in another way, but some skin cancer precursors are here again. Visible light is reaching our epidermis. We have here this layer. And uh, well, photoaging is back. Hyperpigmentation with darker phototypes, maybe not for all of us, but we have to take also into account these uh, phototypes, blue light, the famous blue light, we have double exposure. One, of course, for the solar spectrum. Another one from our electronic devices. If we are using, as all of us, we are using um, our devices, our phone, computer at night, there is a decrease of melatonin secretion. This is gonna be um, joining the same decrease of melatonin coming from solar radiation. So thanks to our electronic devices, we are having some need of extra protection. And finally, infrared, that is related to the decrease of collagen and also to free radicals. And as you can see here, it's an important component of the solar radiation. But how 
because we have already products in the market to solve these issues. How the market is working, how the market addresses these things. We have chemical filters and mineral filters. Chemical ones are aromatic compounds that are gonna work by means of uh, radiation absorption, while physical sunscreen is containing titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. The mechanism is going to be also absorption, but mainly reflection and scattering. Here we have uh, well different ways of acting depending on the um, filter. If it is chemical, if it is mineral, the mineral will form a physical barrier on the skin, and chemical filters they will interact more by force marginal change or by emission of radiation, or uh, well releasing. Uh, energy acids. But the filters that we have into the market, they have some limitations. That's why we are here. In health level, there is the possibility of a skin reaction because of, I mean, uh, finally, it's a chemical reaction that is taking place in the skin. So um, there is this possibility. Also, a chemical filter is oil soluble, so it's going to be solubilized is gonna enter into our, our system. So this systemic penetration, if we are going for some analysis, we can have these filters into our urine, into our blood. As we are introducing them into our body, and this is not something not natural for the body, they can be endocrine disruptor. It has been related this, um, some of these filters to some infertility. And we have to take into account that chemical filters were, were the first developed. So as the first thing that we could see is like uh, we were red, we were banned, they were developed mainly to protect from UVB radiation. UVB radiation is the SPF that you can have in a cream. So there are some limitations in terms of UVA radiation, although it is important because it's necessary according to regulations. What about environmental level? Of course, we are using creams, so we are releasing the cream to the ocean, to the sea, and it is, it is something that is not natural neither for the animals or for the organism. So we have to take into account that it's going to have an effect. These chemical filters are entering, entering sorry, into, the, into our animals in by means of uh, algae that has, they are suffering problems in photosynthesis. So they are in the tropic chain because some organisms are gonna eat this algae or the coral is bleaching. I mean, there are some problems with reef, with coral uh, that are changing the color. Some they are even dying because in part, I have to say that in part because it's not the only thing it is related to some chemicals like chemical filters. And here we have, I mean, the small fish is gonna be eaten by the bigger one and then by a dolphin and also by a polar bear. So there are also some um, analysis and they have found also this product in their organism. For this reason, there are some countries like the more paradisic one that are started to um, forbid some of these filters. So here's just some example to say that well, the more we are studying, the more we discover some uh, not so interesting properties. That means that uh, some chemical filters and suspicious are forbidden in some areas. And as the alternative, um, we are proposing and the countries that are forbidden this country, this filter, are proposing mineral filters, mainly the ones with size higher than 100 nano, because they have lower stability, so lower possibility of uh, moving into the sea. But well, it's something that we have to work on that. And about regulatory level, just some words to say that all the filters that we have in the market, 
we have them because they have been studied and because they are safe. And there is also a concentration in which they can be used. So mainly for chemical filter, we have low concentration, but this concentration is safe. If not, they change it. So there are some modifications of the legislation when they find something that is that may be a risk. The concentration for mineral filter is much higher, the concentration that is allowed. And then uh, if talking about FDA market, they have started to classify also the products. Normally it's Europe, the one that is more, um, how to say, strict with the regulation, but now FDA, they have classified mineral filters as grace, that means safe, and for they have forbidden two chemical filters, and for the rest, they are asking for some information to company about the absorption. This is why they are like uh, non grace at different levels, but that means that they are asking for some extra information to the companies. In terms of efficacy, we have some filters that are more for UVB protection from SPA, some other filters that are for UVA. When talking about chemicals, there are not so much, and some need to be in combination to avoid photocatalytic issues. And the classical filters that are mineral, we have titanium dioxide that in nanometric site is a very good UVA, UVB protection, sorry, but when increasing the site, the protection is going to be much lower. And uh, zinc oxide that is the more important UVA protection. In summary, what are the challenges in the sun protection market? First, we need photo, photo protector against UVB and UVA radiation. Also, that should block visible and infrared radiation. And all together with protection of health and environment, economy, I mean efficacy and legislation. Well, now is when I'm talking about the technology and how we are gonna face this part. So the technology I was, uh, well, how to say, the technology that was developed uh, in 2011 was a method for, for the drastic dispersion of nanoparticles onto bigger size particles. Then this technology uh, was of course having a patent and then the fabrication procedure is protected under trace secret policy. is something that used to happen with technological companies that are having some patents, but also some information that is in the company that uh, should not be served. So this kind of double protection, typical of a spin-off and these kind of companies. So what we are doing, actually nanoparticles, they have a trend to agglomerate. You all know about that. So the fabrication procedure is helping to nanoparticles to be separate. And then when they will try to agglomerate again, they will have in the reactor particles of bigger size. In that way, instead of agglomerating again only with nanoparticles, they will do it onto the surface of bigger size particles. So we are using the same forces that are already there for the nanoparticles, it's just that the process is gonna help or is gonna try to make this nanoparticle to agglomerate onto other particle size. Like this, although it's not the perfect reaction that you may have in a paper, it's never the case, you have this nanoparticle anchor onto the surface of bigger particle sizes. In this way, we want to have the good part, the properties of nanoparticles and the properties of particles of bigger size that are called microparticles here. Yes, this graph is just for explaining that the products are not working like just a mixture of ingredients. This is a graph, I don't know if you can see it properly. This is for SPF and this is for uh, wavelength. So we were putting in one cream, like 5% of products, the same ingredients that we were using for this curve. So first, a standard method is a mixture of uh, products, 
or ingredient if you want. And here, the same after our procedure. As you can see here, in this area, add to, uh, well, let's say, add to, I can't see properly, but in the lower um, broad, uh, nanometers, so SPF, in this area is uh, SPF protection, in this area is UVA protection. So here is not so important when it's a mixture because there is an agglomeration of the particles. And here there is a, a stronger protection from UVA. And this is because the structure of this particle. When going for um, some Brahman of the mixture or of the particles, we were having different intensity that we have related to the um, nanoparticles that are more accessible to light. As you see here, the peak that is narrow and sharper. And when making the analysis of Raman of these different products, we were having this signal for a mixture, this signal for nanoparticles, and another signal with a small sieve with um, well, the products. And we were interpreting these uh, results that were published as a new structure because uh, it was not the, the same signal. With this technology, we are having different um, products. These products, as well, as I was saying before, I visit, they are based on titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. So what we are having products like this NHT that is for protection from UVB and UVA. Products having also, apart from titanium dioxide and silica, iron oxide in the composition with different tonalities depending on the iron oxide um, combination, sorry. When having products also with color, you can use it like in a product like this uh, for having a formula with color and protection. When you see instead of only titanium dioxide, also zinc oxide, you are having a different refraction of the light. So finally in the cream, and uh, there is no whitening effects. It's more transparent creams because when we are going to the market, sometimes it's okay, I don't like this cream because it's giving some whitening. So it is related to the composition of the filters. So that's why we have some also with, uh, we started to work with zinc oxide. Apart from mineral filters, there we had the possibility of um, proposing pigments that are fabricated with the same procedure, but instead of having this makeup color, already a combination, we can have yellow, red, white, and black. Why? Because when, Going for makeup, makeup is uh, produced by combination of all these ingredients. So if somebody wants to make their own uh, color, they can use this combination. And this effective range is interesting for allowing this possibility, apart from giving um, protection. I have to make the difference between the family before that is enhance you that is made for achieving high SPF. And this family here that is mainly for having some color, although also some protection in UVA, UVB, blue light, and infrared. This is only a craft for showing um, the difference between the filters and you here in blue. We have enhanced UT that is composed only by titanium dioxide. Here we are going to have the different tonalities from light to rich, lower um, content of iron oxide, higher content of iron oxide, and this is related to the protection. So from UVB, we have the SPF, UVA, we have protection, also visible. And uh, if we are making here the difference of blue light is because it's something that in cosmetic is like very trendy. And infrared also related to the content of iron oxides. 
with affected family is the same. But as you can see, depending on the color, black, red, yellow, or white, we have different um, groups that is in agreement with what we can see in the literature. So it's something pretty known, well known. The only thing we found interesting is that this one having a name and high duty black was a little bit stronger the protection and also here in blue line for a high duty red. About particle size, uh, we made the difference in cosmetic between nano and no nano, like in 100 nanometers. So when having less than 100 for us is nanometric compound, when having more than uh, is named non nanometric, although in material it's more like micrometric, but it's the cosmetic um, field that is making these differences. We are using different particle size um, methods, techniques like laser diffraction, VLS, microscopy, and also uh, sometimes we have to go for counting these particles. That is uh, pretty nice when this is in HD or another uh, program, but in our case, we used to count it. <laughs> because the difference of, uh, well, it's not so easy for the computer. So we have to make like, counting on our own. And here another example of a nanoparticle tracking analysis, another technique that we can use for showing uh, well, the size of the particle that is kind of uh, in the middle, we call it balance size to protect from UVA and UVB and also visible and infrared. Here we have related to the particle sizes, some um, studies that are needed in cosmetics, like no dermic penetration that is related to the size of the particles. And when compared to uh, nanoparticles also in the market, uh, well, I have to say now that nanoparticles are protecting from UVB, but need to be in your products. When using nanoparticle, we should find this label saying nano. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't do it, but it's like uh, the regulation. And when, um, when working with a nanoparticle, you need to adapt uh, the procedure for the fabrication of cosmetics because, of course, all particles will try to agglomerate, but the lower is the size, the higher is the possibility. Like this, when making the production of cosmetics, you may need higher intensity, higher share, energy, and higher volume when you are including it in your reactor. About photostability to make the difference between mineral and chemical, or there is something very clear because, so, I mean, we are talking about mineral and organic compounds, and even though. Uh, here we have this graph just to indicate that we can achieve SPF 30, SPF 50 with mineral filters, with seem inky, seem same composition is called inky uh, in cosmetics. Here we have some studies of photostability. We are taking a sample, making the SPF. Then uh, this sample was radiated with a sun simulator during one hour. We were making the analysis again, another hour, making the analysis again, another hour. And as we were expecting, mineral filters, there was no SPF variation. There was not a variation of um, protection in UVA, but chemical filters, they decrease after two hours. Do you remember that sometimes you have this recommendation of um, please use chem again after two hours? Is that it is related to this possibility of decrease of the protection? Of course, these ingredients, as you can see here, are in combination. In this case, I'm talking about abovenson and astoclin, typical filters that you may find in your creams, and they need to be together to um, well, to decrease this photocatalytic uh, degradation possibility. Even though after a while, as you can see here, after two hours, you have the decrease of the protection from UVB radiation, SPF, and to add the protection from UVA radiation also. 
and this is very important because it's something like almost 50% the, the lose after three hours. Then we have another point is that when talking about particles of different sizes, we have to adapt the fabrication procedure. If not, we can have problems like this one. We were having some creams with SPF 30 and 50, and they, after one month, there was an aggregation of particles. And as you can see here, if you make the comparison with this another one, there is a decrease of, um, of the protection. We were uh, having these results in collaboration with uh, Autonoma de Madrid, and they were making some uh, Raman microscopy to the creams after one month. So here we have nanoparticles in the cream. Here we have uh, our particles, or particles that are having higher than 100 nanometers. And same formula, same uh, scale. And which are the difference? So we have to say that we are starting with particles lower in size, this now no particle. The, we were making the addition of these particles to the water phase. Here in dark blue, we have water. These are particles dispersed in water. This is the oil phase because when making the preparation of sun creams, you have to clean the, sorry, two phases and you have to use a surfactant to make an emulsion. So we have here different distribution. When having higher size drops, is that the distribution was not so good in this case compared to a filter that actually is having higher size at the beginning. So if we go to 15%, that was the concentration needed for SPF 50. We have here higher agglomerates, I mean, higher concentration, higher agglomerates is something that we could expect and worse um, distribution of the phases. So if we have higher parts or bigger parts with no filter, there are more possibility of when making analysis, there is no filter. So the SPF medium value is going to increase. However, when having this um, possibility with the filters that we are proposing with the technology that we have, although we have also um, agglomerates, these agglomerates are smaller and the uh, cream is more homogeneous. Like this, there are more possibility as we have here in the skin of having this SPF maintaining. So agglomeration means some gaps. Through the gaps, we have the radiation going through. And when there is lower agglomeration, there is lower possibility of uh, having the radiation going through the cream. So this was for explaining that with mineral filters that we have in the market and that there are generally in the market, we can have this SPF 30 and 50 of your creams, but you have to take into account this possibility of agglomeration. So when working with um, nanoparticles, there is a trend to increase the concentration to avoid the agglomeration that is going to make happen in all the cases, but in some cases, stronger. And well, this is more um, marketing uh, slide, but it's a summary of the possibility of, of the products that the company is offering, like protection from UVA, UVB, visible and infrared, also mineral origin, and the possibility of claiming about uh, water care and sustainability because we are talking about a pro uh, process, sorry, that is not using solvent, it's a dry dispersion method. And here we have some um, interesting properties for the creams that the clients may have in the market, like color protection with one ingredient, stability and long-term SPF, and well, all the properties that are related to the, to the ingredients. So just for, well, starting to conclude, these products 
fabricated with this technology are innovative solutions for different approaches. So we have color filters, like uh, the one you here that you can try it later, that are having color and protection in one ingredient. But the point is that they are designed especially to have, uh, well, this is a balanced size, we call it, to relate this size with the protection against different radiation. This ingredient I also have in here a baby care cream because when talking about mineral, we have to take into account there is lower possibility of uh, some reaction, so they are more appropriate, they are more recognized as um, well interesting for sensitive skin, a skin that try to have, uh, may have atopic skin, dermatitis, and also for babies, because the point is that doctors are, I mean, recommendation of the doctor is something like, a baby should not be under the sun until six months, I think. Then from six months to two years, three years, depending on the doctor, they should use only creams containing mineral filters, and then we can start to use uh, different creams with different filters because there is lower possibility of absorption on the skin. And about uh, how to call them an environmental solution is related again to the particle size and the mineral nature to call them, to try to claim these uh, coral friendly characteristics also related to the ISO and certification, the sustainability of the process and the ingredient. And well, finally, all the work that we have been doing for the recitation with FDA and the fabrication as, uh, well, we call it ITH uh, guidelines that are like uh, the guidelines of quality for FDA uh, area. And these are related to the possibility of having these ingredients for pharma. Because in Europe, when talking about creams, creams are, I mean, or sunscreens, this is something that you can buy like a cosmetic. But in some areas of the world, uh, you have to treat them in another way because they are like a pharma, like OTC ingredient that is over the counter, like almost pharma products. And that's it. I just wanted to say thanks for the invitation. Thanks to you all for staying here. And of course, to Katera Sanka and Nanotechnologia and to the university. And thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. Very nice presentation. So, questions from the audience here or there? Um, I don't know if I got it wrong, but you said about the protection uh, when you have um, different colors. Mm -hmm. Is there like a way to control the uh, texture factor uh, for each color? Because I, I could see that depending on the color, it can increase or decrease the, the protection. Yeah. No, there is no way of like uh, with this color you have this protection. It's also, I mean, with our product, we have a combination. So it's pretty, I mean, we have an increase of protection and this is a synergistic defect, but uh, we have not the possibility because it's not a clear trend of saying, okay, if you increase the black color in this proportion, then you are gonna have a higher, um, yeah, I see your point, a higher protection in this area. And if you increase the red color, it's not uh, like a real way of controlling just by a usement. Because finally, uh, in our case, they like they are into the structure, these uh, pigments. So it's not going to be so clear to make a, a difference by playing with them. But it was a, a very nice question. Mm -hmm. I wish it was possible. Yeah, I was thinking because, for example, my case, I have white skin. Depending maybe on the on the components, mm -hmm. it might protect it more or less. Yeah. The point is, I mean, of course, um, 
it is known in the cosmetics market that iron oxide in a small proportion they may help to, to protect the skin. Although titanium dioxide and zinc oxide are the, the filters, they may contribute. But it's not absurd that, okay, if your color is much more intense, then you will have more um, protection. But color is it, going to help. It's going to help. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for your the nanoparticles, when they are added to the, the paint, the foundation, it, there are effects on, because for example, you have talked about that sunscreens make some whitening, mm -hmm. which is one of the products of some sunscreens yep. in the market, but also if mm, the easiness of application is taken into consideration, nanoparticles can make it easier to apply to the skin. Yes, yeah. Like, yeah, you are right. At the beginning, I mean, uh, when you have just prepared the cream, as the particle size is lower, uh, you are gonna have a cream like like it is less viscous. So it's like okay, it's very nice to to extend it. The issue is that it's not so easy to control the aging in the cream. I mean, one product that is having a um, nanoparticle, it is not very well controlled. The viscosity is gonna increase in a higher proportion that uh, one product that is higher, having higher um, particle size because it's a higher trend to agglomerate. But yeah, for sure at the beginning, uh, I mean, you have the two of them and you can see the differences, but you cannot control it that much daily. Thank you. So, I apologize because I have a little bit later. Maybe some of the questions you already explained in your presentation, I apologize in advance. So, I think you, uh, one general question is how is your company is in the in the market to compare with other big companies fabricating it? How, well, what, what is your, your strengths or your position with your competitor? Mm -hmm. um, another general question. Uh, Basically, like you just you stop, told uh, at the end regarding the regulation about yeah. the products. Is we, what's your opinion about this this type of material should be regulated more like a pharma, like a drug, or mm -hmm. instead of a cosmetic? And how do you think it's influencing the environment? The, 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 the okay. spreading of this nanoparticles. Sorry. No, 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 no. I mean, really nice uh, question, actually. About our position in the market, I have to say that we are 12 in the company. So uh, we are, of course, fighting against like a very big companies. The point is that uh, our difference is like having one product for um, different application. I mean, when you prepare a cream, you need a combination of filters. So uh, with this kind of filter, you decrease the number of ingredients that you need in your cream. So if a client, they are already having their cream and everything goes well, they are not gonna change the formula. But if they are going for a new formula, uh, the less is the number of ingredients, is more interesting for them. That in terms of application, in terms of volumes, uh, I mean, it depends on what they want. For more like natural products, when going for something that is different, we have a gap there. I mean, we have this opportunity. Um, then it's like, uh, depending on the area, they may prefer um, creams, sunscreen with chemical filters, or the last years, I'm talking more about three last years, there is a trend changing to from chemical to physical filters. Um, maybe because we are having more, more and more problems with the skin and more allergies, and we are more aware about uh, problem, problems sorry, with the environment. And that's why we are having this uh, 
opportunity in the in the market. I don't know if I was more or less replaying your question. Then about pharma and cosmetics. I have to say that taking into account that when I entered into the company, we were like more focused in cosmetics. When we started to change to pharma, it was like, well, <laughs> it was pretty, pretty strong. But once we are inside, it's something that may be necessary because depending on the kind of skin you may have, there are some uh, limitation and there are not, from my point of view, there is not knowledge enough in the market like uh, people are, sometimes they are going to buy a product, like, okay, I did it a cheaper one. So <laughs> that's the point. So for us, uh, we have to make, and even for the starting material that we're using, we have to make a product that was not expensive to um, be able of, uh, you know, being aligned with the market prices. So uh, I would say that pharma uh, position is more and more needed, not only in some markets like FDA markets, but it seems that like little by little it will appear also in Europe, but we are kind of far away by the moment. Because I mean, we were having an inspection from, uh, um, like a few months ago from the times like the pharma um, organism in in europe but in spain and for them it was also something surprising because they have some relation with fda and they were the ones who had to to come to the company but it's not the moment it seems it's not the moment yet for for the market although from my point of view it's a little bit different but for instance, if you company or some supply from Germany, yeah, it's a regulation more strict. Um, no, there's no difference actually in Europe. So you are working with nanoparticles and you don't run away, or no, we are like uh, pretty aligned in distance because, uh, well, maybe in Spain. They are not that much, but they, they are starting with a little. I mean, uh, maybe nowadays uh, Germany and France, they are a little bit like uh, leading this change in regulation, but Europe is, I mean, Spain is uh, having the same regulation as Europe. Cosmetic sector is going all together. And actually, Europe <coughs> has been doing so many years like leading the regulation of the rest of the world. So if you go to Asia, um, see now they have not been so strict with filter, with mineral filter, but now uh, they are following the trend. Um, five years ago in Israel, uh, the nature of titanium um, for them was not important, but then they adopt the system of Europe that is saying that we're working with nanoparticles, for example, you need to work with uh, steel and no anatas and the coating of the nanoparticles need to be silica or others and not uncoat. So it depends on the areas, but everything is going in the finally in the same direction. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very nice talk. I have a question from, let's say, from side of the client or as consumer, and since we are going near summer and we need this uh, sun creams. Um, okay, it's clear that uh, your creams are more effective because you avoid the agglomeration mm -hmm. of the titanium dioxide. But I have a, a curiosity about the load and also this graph that you saw where you saw how the sun protection factor and the concentration mm -hmm. uh, of the part. First of well, uh, 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 you reach uh, concentrations up to 17% yeah. of weight. This is yeah. huge, it's a lot. Uh, and, and this is for uh, having a sun protection factor 
of 50. Oh, yeah, 50. That's, 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 that's correct. Uh, if you're, uh, because I have, I don't know if it's a new one legend. Yeah. Uh -huh. I have this urban legend that sun protection factor means that you can stay on sun for 50 minutes. And then you have to put cream again. Do you have this? Yeah. That's what I have in my head. But now looking at you, uh, it's, yeah. it seems that it depends on the type of chemical or mineral UV yeah. protection. Well, you have two things then that you, we have, of course, the filters and we have the rest of the ingredients. So if we miss our ingredients with some ingredients of the rest of the cream that are not uh, okay under the sun, then we will have problems, of course. But um, some protection factor means it's like uh, the kind of like the times you could be uh, under the sun compared uh, with no using cream. Like a 50, okay. 50 times more that if you are not using creams. Um, the recommendation typically used to be, I mean, like uh, two hours, maybe related to these uh, results that I was showing like after two hours, be careful because you can have some degradation of the filter of the cream. And about the loading, <laughs> I mean, regulation is allowing to go up to 25 percent when using mineral filters because you need high concentration and if you have a higher trend to agglomerate you may need this 25 percent because i see i mean i see uh, plenty of uh, recipes of creams that they are using 20 and 25 percent of uh, nanoparticles in in their in the pips to achieve this spf uh, in comparison, when uh, using chemical filters, regulation is allowing low percentage. So we need a combination. So uh, they are gonna have uh, one, two, three. According to the legend, you need seven filters to have a good product. But when I see even with chemical filters less than that, because you have a filter one that is allowed two percent. Filter two that is allowed five percent, filter three that is allowed ten, but typically no more than that. So you need a combination. Finally, uh, if you start to make the addition, you have high uh, high concentration of the filter in other cases. So and, person, yeah. And now from the point of view of research, <laughs> okay, it, it, the, the core uh, and, and the starting of your company. Is that you have this method, of course, it's secret. I'm not going to ask exactly how to do the method or what you like to. <laughs> I would like to talk more, but I would be killed. <laughs> I know that, and even this is recorded, so <laughs> you better don't do it. Uh, but okay, if this is the core of the company, if you are able to avoid agglomeration, which is very important for nanoparticles, all of us know mm -hmm. as researchers, uh, you start in the cosmetics and you uh, avoid other things or applications because of market size, because of the added value. Okay. So, do you think it's time for, for the catalysis, of course, <laughs> that we love that? <laughs> for me, it's always time for the catalysis, but <laughs> because actually I was coming, for, uh, coming from a catalysis. But the point is that we are starting with uh, this area because we needed less time to put the products in the market. So we are a company having also some investors working with us, let's say, and they need results. A result means products in the market that is gonna be sold in one year, two years. And we are gonna have, I mean, this kind of companies, we need to put the products in the market. Uh, this product um, is gonna have a value and then we need to start to, to sell the products. So we started working, I mean, we were in this uh, Horizon 2020 project with um, magnets, but was more from the scale up part. I mean, we were having some research group really amazing in that task. Our contribution was to help to make the, the scale up process. 
And then uh, about uh, catalysis, we were staying like a very research level. And finally, it was, I mean, we are having the technology, so the technology is not close for the products. So the technology is there for um, using it in different fields. But finally, we have some people to make the decisions. And uh, some areas is like a really research. And we had to focus in, in one area, and it was cosmetics and mineral filters, because it was the way of like a surviving as a company. Then the possibility of having projects and collaboration, we are always open to, to try to work more on that. But it's like a step by step, and field by field. I mean, I would love to do it. <laughs> and I would like to have one person for every single um, area. But uh, it's not a be so fast. And just curiosity, so the, the, the particle size was the last one. The particle size that was say the big one that we yeah. have where you for yeah. the particles, this this was the around 250 nanometers. So yeah. This, this yeah, that's why, yeah, that's the point. Actually, we are having like the particle size of our higher particles, and then we are right. yeah. you are decorating yeah. the, the other. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the point. That's why the final product is not having a nanometric size. Okay. Thank you very much. So let's thank you again to the speakers and thank you very much for this very nice talk and discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Sí. Uh, no, es que no me digo en esto. Entonces, estamos aquí.